Hey guys, welcome back to the temple. So today's episode, we're going to talk about Jon Stewart and his belief that there are more than two gender. Uh, there's a little skit that he's doing and this video has been like going all over the place around the internet and Anvil was putting the little input in it. So, you know, this is Toy's temple. You might as well hear my thought on it. So before the video start, I'll say straight up, there's only two gender. There's only two sex, right? But Jon Stewart thinks otherwise. So let's see what he has to say about that. Shitty and reductive jokes are kind of my brand. But as we know from history, any moment of progressive visibility will be met with a vicious backlash. There are two genders. There are two genders, and everyone knows it. Ain't but two genders. <laughs> that last guy sounded like it's an emergency, and we're running out of genders. <laughs> everyone, there ain't but two genders. <laughs> I appreciate his attempt to be funny. I mean, even the crowd wasn't able to laugh at his joke, but, you know, whatever. I'll, I'll let that slip for now. The point is clear. The human race is defined by a simple binary, a black and white understanding. There are men and there are women, and never the twain shall meet. Trump is an alpha male. Well, okay, yes, there are obviously men who are more man than other men, but that's an aberration. Beta, gamma. Okay. There's an entire Greek alphabet, a continuum of masculinity. But that doesn't mean cuck, pajama boy, soy boy. Girly man. All right, so this is kind of where it all begins. So that was his attempt in explaining how because there are masculine men, there are beta men, there are femboy, there are all these XYZ, whatever, within the gradient, they are no longer men, right? But if you look at all the pictures, they're still men by the end of the day, you know, whether you're a masculine man, whether you're feminine, you're feminine men, you're still a man. These are just traits to describe a person. Those words are not entity of themselves. They are used to describe the entity, which is a man, right? So when I was growing up, you know, especially during high school, I hung out with like a bunch of like masculine dudes, like thugs, you know, like fucking buff motherfuckers, like gangster ass dudes, you know, and I always thought myself as like not as like masculine as them. But I never thought I was not a man. Like, does, does he think that because you are not a alpha man, you are no longer a man or something? Uh, like, like I, I don't understand this. So this is only, like, his explanation of, like, just a man. So he, he goes into details about, like, his thoughts on, on, on female. And it, it's even funnier, but, like, in a cringy way. Clearly, masculinity appears to be on a, a dimmer, not an on-off switch. But ladies are different. I was a big tomboy. These purple-haired, angry freaks. <laughs> Rabid feminist. Cat lady. High rolling bimbos. Pretty girly girl. <laughs> you know, when I first saw this, I actually genuinely laughed. Just because, like, the spectrum for women is just so wild. You can either be, like, on one end, you're a tomboy. And on the other end, you're a Barbie girl. And then everything else in between, you're, like, an alien, a cat. Or, or like, you know, like you said, like a bimbo lady. That, that was pretty funny. With that being said, that doesn't make it true, right? Even if you're a female and you are on the very far left of this spectrum that he made up, like like a masculine woman, you're still a woman by the end of the day. And the opposite it goes applies for the man as well. If, if you're a man and you're very far on the left, like even if your personality is very far on the right, I mean, you would be like a feminine man, you're still a man by the end of the day. My God. What a cruise line buffet of the gradients in American gender expression. Turns out there's a lot of non-binary shit happening between the binaries. But that hasn't stopped the traditionalists. This whole concept of a non-binary doesn't make any sense. No one is saying that a man has to be a particular way and a woman has to be a particular way. And like, I guess if you are one way and you're acting like the polar opposite, that doesn't make you the other gender. Like, am I the only one to think this is, like, insane? What are you saying? From deploying their newest weapon in the culture war arsenal, the obvious gotcha question. The real basic question, what is a woman? Can you provide a definition for the word woman? For all of recorded history, people have known what a woman is. Yes! All of recorded history! It was simple! Until, like, a year ago! The answer to what is a woman has always been the same. It's uh, a woman is a deformity that occurred in the ordinary course of nature. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's, that's Aristotle. I apologize. That's, 
I'm sorry, that's not what I meant. I meant a woman is a person who has no legal existence once married. That's, I'm sorry, that's, that's early American coverture law. That's, that's not right, no. The, uh, throughout history, it's not a gotcha question, a woman is 30 shekels. That's, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, that's Leviticus. Uh, unless she's whorish, then a woman is a loaf of bread. That's proverb. So the funny part about this bit is not because it's funny, but because it's ironic. What he just says actually goes exact opposite direction of what he's trying to prove. So let me get this straight. So he's saying that throughout history, we have all these people describing what they think a woman is, right? And because it changes so much, we can never have a true definition of what a woman is. But think about that, John. Despite that them being wrong, they all have an idea of what they're talking about. They're, they're talking about a very specific entity. They're talking about an adult human female, and that's, that part does not need to be said. Sure, you can say that women are worth 30 shekels. That is wrong, right? But what is a woman? You're, you're using words to describe something. So if you, you're, if you are describing something, you have to know what that something is in the first place. And that's what they all share. They all instinctively know what a woman is, and that's what they are referring to to describe women. Despite them being wrong, they all knew what a woman is. Like, what, where, where, where is the confusion, John? Like, <laughs> this is ridiculous. Why are we just talking about this kind of shit in 2022? Did we just suddenly forgot what a woman is? Like, so if you're walking on the street and you see a crowd of people, you can't identify a woman or a man? See, even earlier in your skit, you're proving my point. Because when you say there's a masculine alpha man, you're pointing at Donald Trump right so you knew that donald trump is a male so why why didn't you put him on the female section why, why didn't you put him in the woman's section why couldn't he have just been like a masculine female right because you already know that this dude is a man right so if you knew that a woman is a woman and that despite how masculine she would be she is still a woman you would have left her on the right side of the chart instead of the left side but man this is not the only crazy shit that john stewart have ever said um, there, there's another interview that he had with this lady and they they were talking about like, oh my God, I, I hate, I really freaking hate to talk about it, but they were talking about transitioning kid and like doing surgery to them and like pretty much mutilating little kids at an early age without their consent and have lifelong consequences. And he thinks that this is okay. And his logic is if people of higher authority are saying that, Hey, we have all these safety procedures and have you all these things laid out to make sure that your kid you know, despite how young they are, despite how they have no concept of society or the world or themselves, if we believe that they are transgender, we should be able to operate on them. And as crazy as it sounds, check this video out first real quick. Why would the state of Arkansas step in to override parents, physicians, psychiatrists, endocrinologists, who have developed guidelines. Why would you override those guidelines? Well, I think it's important that all of those physicians, all of those experts, for every single one of them, there's an expert that says, we don't need to allow children to be able to take those medications. That there are many instances right. where- But you know that's not true. You, you know it's not for everyone there's one. There's these are the established well i don't know that, that that's not true i don't know that well, then why you would you that. why would you pass a law then if you don't if you don't know that that's true wouldn't you well i know so? that there are doctors and that we had plenty of people come and testify before our legislature mm -hmm. who said that uh you know we have 98 percent of the young people who have gender dysphoria right. uh, that they are able to move past that and once they have the the help that they need no longer suffer from gender dysphoria 98 wow. percent without uh that medical treatment That's well so what this lady is saying is 100 percent true right so i i completely understand that there are people out there that genuinely suffer from gender dysphoria and it's unfortunate it is right but what she's saying is when it comes to younger people they tend to experience this do, do in, in modern culture just because of all the shit that like the left has been spewing out right and the solution to that is to go to therapy and talk it through with people and work it out not go have an operation on yourself and like go through surgery just because like all these like higher institutions are saying that is right right so a as a parent do you instinctively know that you should not be operating on little children like do you really need 
like these institutions to tell you like, yeah yeah something's wrong with your kid they, they need to go you know get operation and get get their boobs removed or chemically castrate them you know and, and like do these horrific things to them that they can never repair right maybe there are better alternative that to, you know to deal with gender dysphoria than to go straight to surgery right so we live in a society where children can't smoke they can't drink they can't go to war right but it's perfectly okay for them to have surgery uh, even though they have no idea of like what it is to be like an adult and they're going to go through with this crazy procedure to just to change the whole entire life right is that like does that make any sense and that's and so- an incredibly made up figure that's that doesn't comport with any of the studies or documentation that exists from these medical organizations what what medical association are you talking about of these doctors well we all right so this scene john stewart is just being a prick he's saying like oh you know what medical studies are you, are you getting all this from the thing is all this gender changing and, and like you know surgery performing on kid is being done at the present right parents are pretty much using their kids as live data as live samples and making them go through all this stuff and then that's why we don't have any data because it's being done in today's time of course we don't have any data that you know what happened to a children like 10 years after like the transition because it's being performed them right now we have all of that in our uh, legislative history and we'll be glad to provide that to you uh, i don't have the name of that off the top of my head i know it's something that you don't have the name of the organization that, that off you're the getting top that of my head oh okay but yes, we have all of that cited in all of our briefs. You're suggesting that protecting children means overriding the recommendations of the American Medical Association, the American Association of Pediatrics, the Endocrine Society. We don't have enough data. We don't have enough to show that these drugs are effective and that these children are better off and that we should you don't encourage have enough, these. Or it's not enough for you. Let, let, me, let me try and flip it a different way and see if maybe this, this can help. In Arkansas, if you have pediatric cancer, and obviously we all want to protect children, I think we established that earlier, whose guidelines do you follow for pediatric cancer? See, here's another fucked up thing that John Stewart said that really pissed me off. He's comparing gender affirming surgery to pediatric cancer. And these two has nothing to do with one another, right? With, with the pediatric cancer, you are diagnosed with something that's terrible that we can observe, right? And we can do something about it. But when it comes to a child being confused with who they are and their identity, like the, per- the good answer is, oh, doctors are saying that they should, you know, chemically castrate themselves and put on puberty blocker and do- perform surgery on them you know, before they even grown into an adult and understand what the fuck is going on with them. And, and like, his argument is weak and it, it's fucking sad. And he's, oh my God, it makes me cringe so bad when I first heard this. Man, I heard some really fucking horror-ass stories when it comes to these parents that, like, are transitioning their kid. I, I heard this one story where this mother, she had a little boy and she think the little boy is actually, has a girl trapped inside of him. And ha- how did she come with this conclusion? She, he, she said that like, oh, he likes to dress up. He likes to play with doll. And he likes the sound of heels, the, the noise that the heels make whenever it hits the ground. Right? And, and, and the logic doesn't make any sense. Oh, how do you know that he, he's actually a little girl inside? Oh, because he likes the sounds of heels clicking. Right? Oh, why does he like the sound of heel clicking? Because he's a girl inside. Like, how, how do you come to this conclusion? Right? And when I was younger, you know what? I thought I wanted to be a ninja. I was like, oh, I'm going to grow up to be a ninja. I, you know, <laughs> I ran around. I used to make like the, what was it, the ninja throwing star, the shuriken out of paper. I started throwing around. And then like, I hardly believe that I was a, I was a ninja. Right? I was a little kid. I didn't know any better, you know? And, like, thank God my parents didn't raise me like a ninja, you know? I do not want to be training under, like, some Shaolin monk up in the up in the forest, you know? Because, like, come on. I, I was a little kid. I didn't know any better, you know? And all these poor kids, they don't know any better. And, like, these parents are transitioning them at an early age that they don't have these understanding. And it, it's, it's fucked up. Well, I think if my child, who is four, if I was faced with that terrible... Uh, decision, then I would be speaking to my doctor. And if my doc- 
doctor recommended something that I disagreed with, then I would get a second opinion. And that's what I believe that these parents need to make sure that they're encouraged to get numerous opinions when they're talking about an irreversible step. You're not letting them. Can. The state's not saying get another opinion. What they're saying is you can't. What you're actually saying no, is the opposite. No, that's actually not at all what the state said. The state simply said that you cannot perform these procedures. And so parents should get another opinion that they and children should want to have another opinion. But that's not... Because, again, these are 9, 10, 11, So if your child is suffering from pediatric cancer and the state comes in and says to you, they recommend chemotherapy, but we're not going to let you do that. You can't. We think you should get a different opinion. And here's the organization we think you should get the opinion from. They're not the mainstream, but they're an organization. So that's, how you, that's who you have to be treated by. Does that sound like something you would well, accept? I think that's... All right, I'm actually going to give him the benefit of doubt for this one because I, I, I get where he's come from. He's saying that, you know, if you have a particular issue in a particular field, it is always good to get a, you know, an expert opinion on people that's been studying this for a very long time, right? So I, I, I get that, right? However, when it comes to children, right, and all these gender you know, bullshit that the left is pulling out, right? These are the same people that believe that men can get pregnant. Dr. Kumar, can biological men become pregnant and give birth? Um, so men can have pregnancies, especially trans men. Uh, so, so can biological men become pregnant and give birth? So are you saying that a biological female who identifies as a man and therefore becomes pregnant is, quote, a man? Is that what you're saying? These questions about who can become pregnant are really missing the point. I'm here to talk no, about no, no, what's no, no, happening no. in I, Texas. I, I, this is me Somebody, asking a question I'm and you question. answering. I'm so, asking the question, sir, not you. Right, and I'm answering the question. Somebody with a uterus may have the capability of becoming pregnant, whether they're a woman or a man. Uh, that doesn't make okay, a difference. Okay, we're done. What do you say a woman is? I believe that everyone can identify for themselves. Okay. Um, do you believe then that men can become pregnant and have abortions? Yes. So can men get pregnant? Hell yes, they totally can. And some even have. But most don't, since in most cases, it's super dangerous. And it's hard to see a reason to do so unless you're a bodybuilder doctor trying to prove the effectiveness of fertility drugs that the FDA won't let you test on women. So Danny DeVito convinces you to test it out on yourself and later you become the governor of California. So men can get pregnant. So are you really going to listen to all these people telling you that your kids need transitioning? You, you really think that these people have your best interests? They, they want to help your kids when they're profiting off of them and treat them like they're fucking livestock and treat them with like experimental drugs? Like really? These are the people you're going to fucking listen to? Listen, you don't have to be the best parent in the world, but I do trust a parent's judgment when it comes to raising their kid, right? Use your eyes, use your knowledge, use your fucking brain and think about the children. They don't fucking need to go through surgery at an early age. None of us did, right? Thank God my parents didn't fucking install the robot arms so I can throw shurikens faster or something, you know, because just because I thought I was a ninja when I was younger, you know, like they raised me correctly. I, I had different ideas of like who I was and like who I wanted to be, but that's the whole point of childhood and, and, and your role as a parent to help guide kids to become an, an adult, not break them when they are younger, you know, just to fulfill your sick fantasy. You know, a lot of these kids, they don't need these surgery. And I said earlier, a lot of therapy and a lot of like talking through this gender dysphoria really helps. It's a very extreme example that's not at all in line with what we're talking about. We're not saying that at some point, because when you have cancer, it literally is, and particularly pediatric cancer, and having friends that have lost children sure. to pediatric cancer, having a four-year-old, I'm sure. I've got some bad news for you. Parents with children who have gender dysphoria have lost children to suicide. And depression and they absolutely because it's have. acute and so these mainstream medical organizations have developed guidelines through peer-reviewed data and studies and through those guidelines they've improved mental health outcomes so i'm confused why you follow ama guidelines and aaap guidelines for all other health issues in arkansas because we checked but not for this. Yeah, just a quick comment. If you guys haven't seen it, there's this movie called What is a Woman by Matt Walsh. 
and what he does is he goes around and asks people what is a woman and like i don't want to spoil it i might i don't have all the time to work to explain it in this one video i would highly recommend it but the point is in in that movie matt walsh will go around and ask these people and they would get a genuine answer he doesn't really you know condescendingly talk down on them like john stewart is you know he's like john stewart over here he's talking down to this lady as if like she's less than him and, and like it, it drives me fucking nuts like i see what he's doing you know these are the interview skills that these people kind of have in order to get like you know people on their side and like get their point across and make the other person look bad as possible you know i see right through this facade that he's doing right now it's simply saying let those young people who are facing gender confusion and dysphoria allow them to become adults and to make that decision allow a child to be a child so here's where we have our our crossroads you've made the determination that protecting these children means not giving them access to the guidelines and care that have been designed by medical and mental health professionals for children expressing gender dysphoria and i'm asking you again what are your qualifications to step in and say no, keeping you from that care is protecting you. You've made that determination. Well, these are irreversible decisions that these children at these young ages are making or that their They're parents are making. They're not making the decision. You're making it sound like a nine-year-old walks into a doctor's office and says, give me some testosterone. And the doctor goes, oh, thank God, because we're wanting to create an army of transgenders. Meanwhile. My first of 2017, uh, according to the Affordable Care Act, insurance cover carriers are mandated to cover medical expenses for trans folks. Um, some of our BUMC financial folks in, 20, in August of 20, I'm sorry, October of 2016, sorry, a couple of years ago, put down some costs of how much money we think each patient would bring in and this is only including top surgery. This isn't including any bottom surgery. And um, it's a lot of money. These surgeries make a lot of money. Um, so female to male chest reconstruction can bring in $40,000. Uh, a patient just on routine hormone treatment who I'm only seeing a few times a year can bring in several thousand dollars because that requires a lot of visits and labs. It actually makes money for the hospital. Now these I got from the internet, um, but it's from uh, the Philadelphia Center for Transgender Surgery, which has um, does a lot of um, surgery for patients. And I just want to give you an idea of how much these bottom surgeries are making. And this is, I think this has to be an underestimate. Uh, this is for a vaginoplasty. They're saying, they're quoting roughly around $20,000 for a vaginoplasty, but that doesn't include your hospital stay. That doesn't include your post-op visits. That doesn't include, um, your anesthesia, your OR. So I would think that this has to be a gross underestimate. I think that's just like the surgeon's um, piece of it, which anybody who's ever been in the hospital knows that that's like 10% of it. Uh, and then the female to male bottom surgeries, these are huge money makers. Again, I think this has to be an underestimate that they're quoting around $20,000 for a phalloplasty. There's been different things that I've read that said it could be up to $100,000. Um, Dr. Winokur, who's our surgeon, says that there's entire clinics where the entire clinic is supported just by their phalloplasties. And that is like a fraction of the surgeries that they're doing. These surgeries are labor intensive. They require a lot of follow-up. No, they don't want to create an army of transgender people because they're crazy. They're doing it because it's a profit. Like one of the videos I showed you guys earlier. Because we're wanting to create an army of transgenders because we're crazy. And they go right in like... Now, we passed a law to protect the children in Arkansas. And I think that's what is important. Again, the medical community disagrees with you that well, that's protecting children. Well, not all of the children. medical community. Who doesn't? Who well, we do, who... have had experts testify here in Arkansas. Okay. From what medical organizations? Well, we have all of those in our briefs. And I apologize that I wasn't prepared to have a Supreme Court argument today in front of you, but I, we are going to have arguments on this case uh, when the time comes. But yeah, that's pretty much the end of the video, guys. It, it's fucking insane that we have to hear this shit. I can't, I can't believe I have to talk about this. And like the whole point of like Tony's Temple is uh, I want to get my mind across about like little stuff. But when I hear shit like this, dude, like it, it drives me fucking nuts. And, and like when I make these videos, I, I am I am talking in passion because it's happening now and it's pissing me the fuck off you know and and like if i don't say it dude like who will
You know, like who's actually looking out for these kids? Who's actually like caring for these kids growing up to be like good adults instead of just mutilating them when they were younger? You know, I don't know, man. I feel like I've said enough and this whole entire thing was super cringe. And oh, my God, I cannot believe I just made this whole entire video about this stupid shit. And I don't know. That's all I want to say. All right. Um, all right. Cool. I'm going to head out. Y'all have a good night. I'm going to play Binding of Isaac. So goodbye.